Hello everybody, this is Robin Norgren. I am a third grade teacher. I live in Arizona. I teach Common Core Standards. Today I'm going to be presenting uh, Coordinating Conjunctions, which is a part of our ELA third grade standard on um, understanding coordinating conjunctions. I have the um, official um, ELA standard listed below in the description. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe if these are videos that would be most helpful to you, especially for those who might be attempting homeschooling or just need a little extra help with homework. Um, also third grade teachers who are trying to make sure that they are hitting all of the notes that they need to hit in order to prepare their students for third grade testing. So let's get started with coordinating conjunctions. So our objective today is to determine proper coordinating conjunctions and use them in a way to um, create your own sentences. But within this dynamic, you're also going to get um, some partner work and some group work so that you can practice together before you actually go on to the assignment that your teacher has assigned for you. So what is a coordinating conjunction? A coordinating conjunction is a word that connects two or more words or groups of words in a sentence. Coordinating conjunctions can easily be remembered by the acronym FANBOYS. F-A-N-B-O-Y-S. So what are coordinating conjunctions and specifically why would we um, refer to them with the acronym FANBOYS? Well, let's take a look. So chicken number one represents four, the word four. Chicken number two represents the word and. Chicken number three represents the word nor, N-O-R. Chicken number four represents but. Chicken number five represents or, O-R. Chicken number six represents yet. And chicken number seven represents so. So throughout this presentation, I will be talking about each of these words, giving you a brief example, and then showing it to you in a sentence. So let's start with four. Four means to show reason or purpose. So the example I have is the chickens focus the chicken focused on her chicks for she knew a fox was around the farm. So what is the conjunction in that sentence? The word for. She is connecting the idea that she's focused on her chickens and then she's also connecting the other thought which is she knew a fox was on the farm. So both of those could be two separate sentences but when you add the word for it connects those two together. The second word we'll look at is the word and. It expresses addition. So my sentence example is and Anne and Emma helped with the chickens. So again, looking at taking out the word and, which is our connecting word, our conjunction, we could have the sentence Anne helped with the chickens. We could also have the sentence Emma helped with the chickens. But in order for ease of conversation and not feeling so redundant, we say Anne and Emma help with the chickens. Here's the word nor. It connects non-contrasting negative ideas. So here's my example. The chickens did not see a movie nor watch a television show, a TV show. So again, look, taking the word nor out of the sentence, the chickens did not see a movie. Also, the chickens did not watch a TV show. Putting it together with the word nor, we're connecting two contrasting thoughts together. The chickens did not see a movie nor watch a TV show. But it shows contrast, meaning two different things. So here's my sentence. The chickens did not lay many eggs this morning, but Anne and Emma still enjoyed gathering them for breakfast. Again, as we can see, we could have two sentences there. The chickens did not lay many eggs in the morning, period. Anne and Emma still enjoyed gathering them for breakfast, period. 
putting that word but connects those two thoughts together and it just allows for a more um, with the ear when you're listening to sentences sometimes you will feel like you're getting tired of listening to sentences have you ever noticed that so when you use a word like a conjunction it brings those thoughts together in a way that actually you take in both of the thoughts at the same time without feeling like someone is just talking and talking and talking and talking i want you to notice that the next time you notice someone it feels like they're talking a lot perhaps they could be using some conjunctions all right here's my next one in the acronym fanboys the o represents or and it expresses choice so here's my example the chickens were free to walk around or enjoy talking with the sheep. So again, not two full sentences this time, but two full thoughts that we could have put separately, but we chose to put them together. Here's why in the acronym fanboy yet shows a contrast or an exception. Here's an example. The mama chicken wanted the chicks to sing together, yet George did not want to listen. So here we are. The mama chicken wanted the chicks to sing together, period. George did not want to listen, period. The word yet brings those two thoughts together in a cohesive way. It makes sense to your brain as you're hearing it, but also lets you know that there are two different things going on. They're contrasting each other. One set of chicks want to do one thing, listen to their mother as they're singing together. The other chick, George, did not want to listen as they sang. All right, so now it's your turn to practice what we have been talking about with each of these conjunctions. We're gonna fill in the blank with one of the following coordinating conjunctions, and, but, or, for, so, or knower. Now in this example, it's not showing one of the fanboys, but here is another conjunction that is part of the, um, the family. I couldn't go to the park, blank, it was raining. The answer is because it was raining. Now as you can see, just like our six that we're focusing on today, and this one we talked about in a previous video, I couldn't go to the park would be, could be one sentence on its own. It was raining could be another sentence on its own because adds to the ease and the flow of writing stories, telling stories, and creating a, a more cohesive sentence. All right, so here's the first one. Tan Timmy wanted to play outside. Blank, it was his favorite activity. So which of the six fanboys would we put in that? sentence? The answer is four. Sarah loves ice cream blank. She doesn't like chocolate flavor. The answer, but. Max has a soccer game tomorrow, blank. He needs to practice his dribbling skills. So is the answer for that one. The store is closed now, blank. You can visit it tomorrow. but is the answer for that one. Now it's your turn. I'd like you to work with your partner or work one-on-one -on -one and write a sentence for each of those fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, what are the last two? Thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure to like and share and subscribe if you are interested in this kind of content. And as always, leave a note in the comment if you're interested in one particular common core standard that you would like me to cover.